The Porsche 911 is a legendary car that has had multiple generations and prices of the 911 are typically very high. Even long term, a lot of 911s hold their values pretty well. So today I'm going to talk about five that have depreciated pretty far in value to some degree or another, but ultimately offer the best value for money 911s on the market, in my opinion. Do hit like if you like this kind of content, subscribe so if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> For me, the 964 911 is one of the best looking generations to have existed. It's the epitome of the 911 shape, smaller in size showing its age and commitment to being lightweight and completely at odds with the far boxier cars it competed against in the 1980s. It's also the base car used to create the modern singers that we've seen today, which alongside Porsche's relentless growth in brand value has meant that most 964 variants are ridiculously expensive nowadays, having been super cheap at one point in their lifetimes. This means that today the best value 964 you can get your hands on is this, the Carrera 4, which starts at around £48,000, and 60 grand will get you a 1990 coupe in reasonable condition, expensive but not bad compared to most other versions of this car. The RS, for example, is well over 200 grand, the Turbo is over 100 grand, and even the Carrera 2 is well over 70 grand, so the Carrera 4 is the cheapest entry point we have into 964 ownership. That means you'll get an all wheel drive 964 with a 3.6 litre flat six engine producing 240 seven brake horsepower which will get it to 60 in 5.9 seconds which isn't even slow especially for how old the car is which is funny to say given on release the car was 85 percent new when compared to its predecessor and when it arrived it actually originally came in this carrera 4 model rather than the carrera 2 which arrived a year later it had a bunch of new features over previous 911s like the coil springs instead of torsion bars but far more interestingly the 964 generation had a bunch of iconic cars that made this car feel that little bit better in terms of value for money that includes cars like the 964 Cup, a race version of the 911, the Leichtbau, the Carrera RS, and the Targa, as this was the last Targa into the 991 generation. Crazy stuff. It's a classic car though, so if you buy one, prepare to treat it as such. It is known to have leaky pipes between the dry sump oil tank and engine, and the main problem is the dual mass flywheel failure. After the 964 came the 993, known for being the last of the air-cooled 911s, and in my opinion, one of the most underrated generations, given it's had such a short lifespan, and came during a time when Porsche really were struggling for money in the early to mid 1990s. Now again, 993s today have gone ridiculously up in price in general, and you won't get most types of this car for anything less than 50k, that is excluding the lovely base model, the Carrera 2, which starts at around £37,000, with most examples being around the 50k mark from around 1994. For that kind of money, you'll be getting yourself a 36 litre flat 6 engine, producing 250 brake horsepower, which you get it to 60 in 5.4 seconds marginally faster than the 964 we just mentioned. I know I said the 964 is probably my favourite shape, but the 993 is definitely a timeless shape and up there amongst my personal favourites. I think the more fluid designs of the 1990s really suited the 911. 20% of parts from the 964 carried over to the 993, so there is a base level of similarity, but in general it was a whole new design again, with a new lightweight alloy subframe and focus on suspension tuning to stop the typical 911 liftoff oversteer of previous generations. All this came together to make a car that had a far better driving experience than most previous 911s, according to owners and reviewers. The design was also based on the 964 with an update to it, and it was actually an English designer, Tony Hatter, who put pen to paper and made it a reality. Now, sadly, the 993 Carrera 2 didn't come in the wide body. I believe only the C2S and C4S, as well as the new turbos and above, came with that. But given the age, the C2 non-S still looks very good with the slim body. Watch out for the electricals on these, particularly the non-engine electrics like the windows, for example. Rush shouldn't be a major issue with them at all, but the auto transmission has been known to have some problems at times. From the 993, we moved on to the 996, which is perfect because the next car on this list is the 996 Carrera 4S, a car I am genuinely personally interested in right now, as I think it might be the best value for money special Porsche you can get. Definitely the best value 911 for me right now. These literally start at around £16,000 today, making it the cheapest car on the list, and they're typically found between 20 to 25k for nice examples from around 2003. This was the generation that brought about the controversial headlights, the move from the typical circular ones to the fried eggs, which 
then had their own facelift midway through the 996 generation to be a tad more angular and in my opinion a bit cooler. Now whether you like these headlights or not they definitely originally helped to bring the prices of these down relative to other 911 generations which is partly why the prices of this gen are still low today. That is alongside some of the other factors as well though of course as this generation 911 did some other things that annoyed purists like going water cooled for example. This move away from the pure 911 formula that enthusiasts loved definitely split opinion enough to make this generation the controversial one but now they're starting to get the love and attention that I think they deserve. A C4S comes with a 3.6 litre flat 6 engine which makes 320 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds of course also being all wheel drive. It's a great and slightly different looking 911 too as it gets the wider body and the long rear light bar both of which are pretty desirable and help the car to look more exotic than it really is. But having a wide body 911 long term I think is good news. Look at every wide body 911 from every generation before this one they are worth a fortune and I believe depending on how cars go in 10 to 15 years time these will be good news too. IMS and RMS bearings are the main issues to be aware of with these but in many cases they will have been replaced with stronger ones anyway. Some early models had cracked cylinder heads as well and coil packs can go too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are then do hit the like button and subscribe so if you're new. Don't forget to check out the merch site at carswithjamie.com and let me know in the comments down below what is your favourite ever 911. I don't just mean generation, I mean specific 911. So is it like a 911 991R or whatever? I'll let you know mine at the end of the video. Now we're neatly on to the next generation 911, the 997, which returned to the circular headlights but of course continued with the more modern water cooling. The 997 generation broadly for me is the best value for money generation in that the 996 was maybe too controversial controversial for some people and the 997 returned ever so slightly back to a more typical 911 formula. It also remains more manual and analogue than the later generations while having at least a bit more modernity about its interior space and technology. The shape of it is also super classic 911 and it's that bit smaller too than more recent generations which some people really like to see. In this video I'm specifically talking about the 997 Turbo with Turbo being a very highly regarded 911 nameplate with memories of the Widowmaker and the likes. It comes with a 3.6 litre twin turbocharged flat 6 engine which makes 473 brake horsepower the most on this list which would get to 60 in 3.8 seconds ridiculously quick for a car of its age and price given it's not a supercar and when i say price i say that because the turbo s is so much more expensive and even cars like the c4s are similarish in price too where these start at around 35,000 pounds and typically sit at around the 45k mark for a nice 2007 model when you get a turbo you don't just get the twin turbos you get the wider body too like the c4s we just spoke about out, but even more than that you get the typical air intakes on the bulky rear arches as well as some turbo specific features like the alloys. Add on the wing on the rear too and the car definitely stands out when compared to other 997s and it looks very similar to the Turbo S so debadged only the most experienced enthusiasts will know the difference. Luckily on these a 3.6 litre block was less known for bore scoring and IMS RMS failure and in the 997 generation most of these problems had been resolved to some degree though some owners do still know it's worth having strength and bearings regardless regardless of peace of mind. Taking the top spots in this video is the next generation 911, the 991. Not by design, but you'll notice that in this video we've literally gone from one generation to the next simply based on performance, which to some degree aligns with Porsche's evolution, not revolution mindset for the 911. The 991 massively modernised the 911 over the 997, particularly in shape and size. The dimensions got bigger, the engines got larger, the power output went up, and the interiors got more modern and comfortable for today's standards. And what's crazy is that this gen is already 10 years old. I really wanted to get a GT product into this video and the 991 GT3 is the perfect car for that. Yes, it's objectively quite expensive starting at around £85,000 with most sitting at around the 95 k mark or beyond for a nice 2014 model but subjectively compared to other GT 911s that's really good. That's a similar price to the 997 GT3 and not ridiculously more expensive than the 996 GT3 while also being significantly cheaper than the 992 GT3, almost 100k cheaper to be exact and for your money you're still getting a highly exotic looking and driving 911 which hosts a 3.8 litre flat 6 engine making 468 brake horsepower which will get to 60 in 3.4 seconds and even though that is rapid if you know GT3s you'll know that that's not the whole story. That's because these are race cars for the road which came with aero. Yes the engine is based on that you'll find in a Carrera S but it's been heavily modified to have the power needed to get it going around a track. It also came slightly more speckable than previous generations in line with the more recent insane 
some personalization you can do to Porsches. Hence, you can get these with race seats or the quite popular comfort seats instead, and similarly, you can get them with or without the cage in the rear, so they can be more or less track focused depending on what you like most. These didn't do so well to begin with, though, due to some production errors with some of the bolts, so there was a massive recall, and you should definitely expect to see proof of that work on any of these that you buy. Outside of that, though, these are pretty good on reliability. So, I asked you guys, what is your favorite Porsche 911? Let me know that in the comments down below, and mine personally, it's a little bit cheaty, but mine is the 911 GT1. Such a stunning car to see in real life. Do hit like if you like this content, subscribe as well if you're new, mass thanks to the Patreon for their support, and see you guys as well for watching, and if you want to see some other Porsches that are super cheap, then click up here and subscribe down here.